Well, commodity prices have been low this year, and unfortunately, there is little relief in sight for farmers. Joining us now for more on this week's bottom line is Twyla's Neil Malasson. Neil, it seems like grain prices in particular, are just kind of stuck in low gear. Yeah, they, they really are. They're just in the tank right now. And of course, prices do fluctuate and they fluctuate every day. But I think this year as a whole, the only thing that could get us out of this lower trend is a major weather disaster or a series of them that would change grain production in the United States. Now, no one wants to see that happen, of course, especially on the scale of what we've seen recently with the floods here in the state. So with fingers crossed, we go into this planting season with the idea that we're going to see steady production both here and in South America. What this means for corn is about 90 million acres for the U.S. and a carryover by the end of the year pretty similar to what we saw last year. Now that doesn't bode well for higher prices at all and we could see corn stuck in the four dollar trading range for the foreseeable future that we've seen thus far. What could get us out of that? Well, those lower prices are really good for our livestock sector and can further incentivize us to rebuild the national livestock herd. Prices are coming down for cattle and for beef, but super cheap feed can really help maintain profitability for them. And if the herd grows, we'll start to see a pickup in demand for corn, thus raising prices eventually. Soybeans, we're looking at between 82 to 83 million acres in the United States with a carryout supply even larger than last year. South America may see some reduction in acres this year, but not enough to slow output significantly. All that said, I think many farmers are looking at whether or not beans will once again hit that $10 mark, and it's possible we could see that, especially with a shortage of palm oil on the world market stage, creating demand for bean oil. However, the bottom line here is farmers are just going to have to crunch the numbers and see what works. Beans may be a better choice, even if they never see that $10 a bushel mark this year. However, a continuation of this season's wet uh, rainfall that we've seen so far may see corn as a better choice, even at $4 because fungicide spray for beans would drive up overhead there. Farmers are just going to have to look at what works best, and it's likely going to be a mix of both for many in the Midwest especially. And guys, uh, unfortunately here in Louisiana, we may not get much of a choice here. They may just have to go to beans. For those who are deeply affected by the flood, we've just run out of time for corn planting. Well, Jolly Nash, who I talked to two weeks ago uh, up there in Red River in Natchitoches parishes, he plants a lot of corn and a lot of cotton. And he said that he's got a number of acres that he hasn't been able to plant and some of it he lost to the flood. And if he's not able to get in there and replant corn, He's going with cotton all the way. And that's one of the ways in which farmers do have to take a look at things. You know, uh, soybeans are generally the natural choice, but you got to look at fertilizer, you got to look at soil acidity and all those things. What works best may be cotton, even stuck below 60 cents as it is right now. And if anyone knows where, what it's going to cash flow, it's Jolly Nash, I can tell you it that does. much. Thank you very much, Neil Malonson. Well, that does it for this edition of Twyla. We'll bring you an encore presentation of our coverage from the Commodity Classic next week. In two weeks, we'll have full coverage of the Louisiana Farm Bureau Livestock Committee's beef tour and Avery's trip to Cuba. Until then, you can watch all of our stories online on our website at twylatv.org and be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. For all of us here at Twyla, thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again right here next week.